in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. Plush, congrats. Um, you might be one of the Thank first post-pandemic bands, right? PPDs or P PPBs. I don't know. <laughs> if you, if you were, because, because all of this uh, stuff that's taken off for you uh, with Plush has happened or, you know, either right before the pandemic and now you're kind of just busting out of it post pandemic or, you know, hopefully fingers crossed post pandemic, all that kind of stuff. But uh, tell us, tell us a little bit what it's like, um, Mariah, we start with you uh, to form this band and uh, what steps you took in order to get uh, Bella uh, in the band as well. And how did it all begin? Yeah, so um, so the way that it all began was it was probably the end, you know, like it was like right before the pandemic happened, actually. And I was, you know, I had like a solo thing going on, like, um, as you mentioned, like after The Voice, you know, I had a solo thing going on, which was great. And I had a lot of great experiences. And, you know, with that with that band, I, I got to do some really fun things. But I just wasn't 100 percent happy with what I was doing. And I just you know, when I was little, everybody that I looked up to, it was always bands, you know, I always saw myself being a part of a band, you know, um, and that was something that I just thought, you know, it, it was time, you know, to be part of a, a real band, for lack of a better term, um, and so right around the same time as the pandemic hit, of course, I was at home all day, you know, on social media, because like, what else are you gonna do? And uh, I came across uh, Brooke Colucci's drum videos. And I was like, wow, like this girl is ridiculous. And I thought that it was so crazy that she was 16 too at the time. Right. And um, I found out that she didn't live too far from me. And the two of us got together through a mutual venue and we ended up jamming and the chemistry was just instant, you know, not only as uh, musicians, but as friends too. And it was just something that felt really special. And then we were like, okay, you know, let's try this. Let's, let's really have a go at this and, and try to be a band. And, um, Brooke at that point had introduced me to Ashley, our bass player, who, um, I think the two of them had done the school of rock program together a few years prior. Gotcha. And then the three of us got together and we, we had a little jam sesh. And again, the chemistry was just, I mean, I fell in love with Ashley as well. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like this chemistry is freaking slamming, man. And Ashley just, um, by the way, was supposed to be on uh, the podcast yes. with us. We would have been a, you know, sort of four squares instead of three, but she has some jury duty. So she is fulfilling her civic duty out there. But, uh, <laughs> we'll make sure we get you guys back on as the full band at some point. So you have these three pieces yes. and then you have that fourth ingredient in Bella. And how, yes. did, how did that come around? So I was actually, I mean, same deal, mid pandemic, just on my phone and I was on Instagram <laughs> and I came across an ad that Lizzie Hale had shared saying, you know, her friend Mariah is looking for a female guitar player from the Northeast. And so I've, you know, I was looking at like their social media pages and kind of similar to like when you came across Brooke's video of just like, holy, like these girls are insane, you know, just the talent's ridiculous. So I emailed their manager like right away and just introduced myself and sent in an audition video. And I think like literally the next day, Mariah and I were talking. And then a couple of weeks after I came down to New York and we started jamming and just the chemistry was unreal, like from the first practice, you know, and it was a lot of fun. So yeah, since then it's kind of just been this crazy roller coaster. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I'm, I'm, hopefully I got all of that. Uh, Vic, give me a thumbs up if we got all audio and everything's good that, okay. Cause I'm getting a little bit of that Winnipeg sort of Wi-Fi that got a little jumbled on there on that last answer, but no worries. Cause we are hanging out with the rock band plush finding out um, how things began. And you know what? I should have run this animation before. Cause that's how we start every single show because we are talking about the history of plush. So let's go back to get forward with plush. <laughs> All right, it's one of those days for me, folks. Just just bear with me because we are on tour. Um, and again, you can tell 
hotel room, um, pretty nondescript somewhere in Winnipeg. Um, but I, you know, I can't always rely on the pandemic. Um, the girls are telling us about how they started the band plush and, you know, they were on their phones, on the internet. Exactly. I started a podcast. That's exactly the same reasons that we all do it. It gave you some time to, uh, really practice and get together as a band because you couldn't tour you were actually forming uh recording wise how did those first demos come about how did that those first recordings come about and who um if anybody took you under their wing to uh, get the songs all in shape and get the production together how did that work out um going into the studio mariah yeah so um i had been working with Johnny, um, Johnny K and, you know, getting some, some songs and, and just kind of bouncing off of him. Like, you know, what songs do you think are, you know, album worthy or, and, um, yeah, so we, we worked up on the songs and Johnny just really is so incredible. Like he's so genius and his vision just completely aligned with ours. And, it really was just such a smooth process. I mean, we went to Nashville and, um, you know, within that first week, we really just, you know, drums were done within like a week. Um, you know, we had guitars laid down a little bit, like some rhythms and stuff. And, you know, we really had like the, the skeletons of the song, if you will, or like the, the bass, you know, the basses. Um, and then we went to Chicago to do vocals and overdubs and, uh, you know, lead parts, solos. And it, it really was just a very smooth sailing process. And, you know, some of the songs we, some of the songs were just riffs, you know, like I know our song Athena was just a riff when we got in the studio and we really had to sit with that one for a little while. And, um, you know, with Johnny and just kind of really just write the whole entire song there in the studio. And it's that's a killer what we did. Riff. It's such a killer oh, riff. I, I, I've been I've been listening to him this morning and um, the last couple of days actually uh, just been getting into the music. We're going to talk about uh, the new single. Um, I believe it's called "Better Off Alone." Right? Am I correct with that? Yes, correct. And that and that came out. So um, these, I'm just wondering, Mariah, did the experience that you had uh, working in um, whether it was uh, The Voice or whether it was even earlier um, in high school, you were part of a group called uh, the Modern Day Music. And uh, tell us a little bit about that because it seems like that sort of formed, you know, part of the basis and, 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 and gave you that experience and, and gave your voice, I guess, um, a more of, of a maturity than, I, than you would expect out of, you know, most debut bands coming out. You, you have a, a seasoned voice. So uh, tell us about Modern Thank Day you. Music and how that came about. So Modern Day Music was, it well, is, um, but it's, it's a music school and it's, you know, it's for everything. I mean, piano, guitar, bass, uh, vocals. I mean, I mean, everything. You can um, go there to... And I, around like nine or 10, I was just figuring out that I could, you know, could sing and I wanted to learn how to use my voice properly. Um, and so my parents were just like, cause I was a really shy kid. So like a lot of the time my parents would see that I like to do something and they would have to like kind of nudge me and be like, Hey, you know, you should do this if you like this. And so they were like, we're going to set up voice lessons for you. And if you, if you like it, you know, we'll continue with it. And if you don't then that's fine um and one day i think we were at the like the parent teacher store or something some random place and there was a flyer on there and it said uh modern day music and my parents were like mariah look it's look like this is perfect for you and the place was only like 20 minutes from my house too and so i started taking voice lessons there and that you know the rest was history i mean i just i i kept on taking voice lessons there up until like this year, honestly, because like, you know, touring and stuff, but I just loved it there. And they had this band program um, 
where they take the kid, you know, the students and group them in bands together. And that was really just such a great, I mean, really it was like a, like a, a career defining moment for me because I got the first taste of what it was like to play in a band, you know, with, with right. other musicians and like-minded people who, um, you know, love to play the, the same music. And it was just so much fun because there wasn't like a, I mean, it's called, it's a music school, but it's not like they're like in the bands, you get to pick whatever songs you want to cover. So it's really just a free flowing, um, and you know, there's a, there's a band director, which is one of the teachers, but right. you know, they're really there to help guide you and help to rehearse the songs. But as far as she that, I mean, a good really foundation. Yeah, yeah, it's a it, great foundation, honestly. It, Can't so say enough go. good things about modern day music. Mar Mariah has modern day music. Bella, I want to move on to you and how and what got you interested in playing guitar because you guys didn't meet at that a music school. What were your early influences and um, yeah, what got you into being on stage that you are right now? Yeah, so I think like my first one was like my dad plays guitar and owns a music store and ah. growing up like his recording studio was in our basement. So I was just always around it. Um, so it was kind of just normal for me to be like, okay, after school, I'm going to, you know, hang out at the store for a while, then come home and there's a client recording in the basement and that's just normal, you know? So I was just always around, you know, music all the time. And then because of that, like in both of my parents being huge into rock, I was like really early on, like my favorite band was Kiss and I love like the Beatles, Led Zeppelin. Um, so Kiss was kind of the first band that you know, I think I was like eight, between three and five. I just thought like Ace Freely was like the coolest human alive, you know, <laughs> with like all the, the imagery and the smoking guitar and all that. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So it was actually for um, my fifth birthday. My parents got me my first guitar and I took lessons at my dad's store all the way up until I was 18. So I it was kind of just always being around music for me, really. Um, and then along the way to discovering all these bands either through my parents or through you know friends or teachers and just totally expanding my taste through that there was a little bit of alice cooper in there too wasn't there oh yeah a lot because <laughs> <laughs> we have some sort of uh there's a definite connection between uh plush and the alice cooper man and hopefully someday uh we'll get you guys out on the road with us um there you go uh, am I am I wearing the same exact hat? I know I have that same bandana that I'm wearing, um, but that's Bella uh, as, and Bella's mom. And there you go at one of the rock shows up in the Northeast. Um, and I think that might have actually been with the Ace Freely Band or, or one of those shows because I know that we're uh, we have toured with Ace in the past many many times, and we're going to tour on this tour. Um, Oh, wow. That's cool. That's at a rock and roll parking lot uh, early, that's early on. Yeah, I think that was on the Motley Crue tour. Like that might have been the first time I saw you guys, I think. I can definitely tell you that's a 2016, maybe, no, 2015 because of the Les Paul that I was playing at that point. Oh, um, <laughs> you know, uh, so there are definitely uh, similarities in, that, that run through the Alice Cooper Band and Plush. I know that your drummer... Has uh, has been uh, mentored a bit by Glenn Sobel. They've actually had some lessons together as well because he was saying, or, or they've had some sort of, you know, um, definitely trading off uh, some sort of knowledge and experience in, in lessons and stuff. And I know that she follows his his uh, his stuff because he was he was basically saying, oh yeah, I know, you know, I know the drummer of Plush, I, you know, um, we. So there you go, so, you know, but every drummer, everybody, you know, every drummer knows everybody. I mean, do you find that that that, that like the, the drummer community is very tight knit and very close? What about the guitar playing uh, sort of community? How are you treated? And let's, you know, let's be honest here. How are you treated by the sort of male dominated guitar uh, world? as far as as you embark on all these uh tours with really really uh high level guitars such as slash um how, how have they been treating you guys on the road they've been amazing um i was definitely going into it like 
I wasn't sure what to expect, you know, um, but especially like Slash or Jen Majura or when we met Nita in Nashville, everyone has been so cool and down to earth and welcoming. And especially like touring, that's such a great environment. And I really just can't say enough great things for all the bands, like, you know, on all of our tours up until this point, like taking us under their wing and um, really just being so welcoming to us. Love it. And Mariah, you having the same yeah. experience as well with singers as well? Because I know that you have um, a very cool connection with Lizzie Hale, who, you know, guitarist, singer, songwriter, is just like you. Um, how are those relationships uh, sort of uh, growing? Yeah, I mean, you know, same thing as Bella said. I mean, everybody has just been so, um, you know, especially Lizzie and Amy, they just have been so welcoming. And like when, when we toured with them, they, you could tell that they knew, they, they knew 100% that it was our first, you know, big tour and, and, you know, probably that we were all very nervous <laughs> um, and very, you know, uh, you know, just trying to, to find our place in that huge world. And they just did everything that they could to make sure that we felt welcome and, you know, safe and just at home and, you know, to give us advice and, really everybody's just been so kind and welcoming i have yet to have any negative experiences with anyone really <laughs> well vic if honest. you go back to that if you go back to that shot just now with plush and hailstorm don't you think it would look kind of cool too to have the alice cooper logo somewhere in there and that would be a good tour what do that you guys think amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my gosh are you kidding me that would be sick i might have yeah. to steal one of his bow constrictors though <laughs> well, those are the remaining dates of our alice cooper uh, tour right now and we are ending the tour up um with ace freely so it you know everything sort of blends together in rock and roll as well as uh the instruments that we do play i always say that uh we play the guitars that our guitar heroes play. The reason why I play uh, Cherry Burst Last Paul on stage is because of Ace Fraley. I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method. about the meat. 